We are ready. What about you? Yep, we're starting soon. Yes. Good morning, Europe and Terre Homekost. I'm Roger Hilton and welcome to Global Tremors. Three weeks into Russia's unprovoked aggression against Ukraine, the situation on the ground is not going to plan for President Putin. Ukrainian resistance remains stiff and defiant in the face of occupying forces. NATO leaders are meeting for an extraordinary meeting next week in Brussels and are taking all necessary steps to deter further Russian expansionist plans. Live from Tallinn, it is my great pleasure to welcome Estonian Minister of Defense, Kali Lanet. Mr. Minister, I know your schedule is busy, so thank you for joining Global Tremors. Good morning and Teromikus. Uh, Minister, let's get right into it. Um, I'm going to start first with a general question about the situation on the ground. Prior to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, much was made of Russia's military modernization and their technological prowess. Military success in Crimea and in Syria led many experts to believe that they were a formidable force. As the current campaign in Ukraine has confirmed, there is a major difference between appearance and application, where their military has failed at basic features like logistics as well as command and control. And finally, according to the New York Times, Russia has deployed 20 generals with four already killed in action. When taking these failures together, why has Russia's military unperformed and is it surprising in your opinion? I believe that first uh, President Putin made uh, several miscalculations. At, at first, uh, the readiness of uh, Russian army. I believe that, uh, that the readiness of Russian army wasn't on that level what uh, what uh, president putin thought because at first we, we know already all the communication between the different uh, battle groups wasn't uh, on that level what it should be uh, spatial communication lines were disrupted and that means that if you are on the civilian communication that it's quite easy to listen to that and uh, and to listen all the next plans or activities, it's uh, quite easy to protect Ukraine and Ukrainians. And, uh, and that shows that uh, the modernization of the Russian army on the paper, it's quite good, but in reality, it's not so good. And, and uh, always question it on details. Maybe there are so huge and nice plans, but practically, in details, it doesn't work. It's a one of the examples. Uh, so if you're just joining us this morning, very early on Global Trenders, we're speaking with Estonian Minister of Defense, Kali Lenit, who's identified sort of the basic communications of Russian forces as one of the reasons for their underperformance on the battlefield. It goes without saying, Minister Lenit, there's been tons of reports of soldiers having to use cell phones and operating uh, without encrypted networks. My next question to you is, while you've identified why Russia has underperformed and while communication is a major part of it, in your opinion, what is the one issue that the Ukrainians have been doing as part of their battle strategy that has proven so effective against Russian invaders? One of the most important things is the, the morale of uh, Ukrainian troops, because they are defending. Russian troops try to attack. It's a totally different thing. And, and secondly, of course, uh, the miscalculation of Putin's was that the uh, West is so united. West gives different practical and humanitarian help to Ukraine. And <clears throat> it keeps also very high Ukrainian troops morality, moral. And, and I can mark moral of Ukrainian troops, the second strongest thing what Putin doesn't understand when he made the plans. Uh, so, so, Minister, thank you so much again for outlining it. And again, sort of the morale has never been higher. A quick follow-up before we move uh, out of Ukraine into NATO. We're three weeks into the war. Do you think that this level of morale can, can continue to remain as high as it is, considering that they're still holding major cities uh, like Kharkiv and Kiev? Or do you expect the longer this go on to the morale to sort of dip a little bit? Every small victory from the Ukrainian side keeps morale higher and even raise the morale. 
and of course, uh, Western support and Russian isolation is two main parts why the moral in Ukraine is so high. Well, Minister, let's shift from the battle situation in Ukraine and more to NATO. As you know very well, as your country knows, and all of your neighbors in the Baltic and on the eastern flank, one of the main tactics of the Kremlin is to sow division and spread panic to its advantage. Since the attack, NATO and its allies, as well as the EU, have responded by demonstrating unwavering political solidarity and enacting unprecedented economic sanctions. Strictly in the military realm, NATO has triggered for the first time its response force, uh, and the Pentagon has deployed some 12,000 troops to NATO allies, including the massing of infantry, aircraft, and tanks not seen the Cold War. So you're on the front line of this aggression, Minister Lannan. Can you describe how Estonia and its NATO allies are taking the necessary steps to defend alliance territory? As, as we all know that uh, NATO's aim is, short-term aim is to strengthen uh, our eastern flank, NATO eastern flank. And uh, after this interview, I am sitting to the car and driving to, to Tapa. Uh, it's, uh, let's say, a little bit more than 100 kilometers to the direction uh, of Russia, where are our EFP troops. And uh, I will welcome over there our British friends, where we have e extra one uh, battalion to be here in Estonia to strengthen NATO eastern flank and, and of course early this week arrived 250 troops from Denmark. We have uh, here French uh, fighters, Mirage, and, and these are the first steps how to show how NATO can strengthen eastern flank of NATO countries. Minister, I'm so glad that you brought up Tapa Base. We talked, you've already indicated that the short-term goal for NATO right now is to reinforce the eastern flank, which is, of course, goes without saying all of the reinforcements coming in. Minister Lannan, the, the security situation has changed so dramatically since the inception of the 1997 NATO-Russia founding act. So while it's a bit of a controversial topic, should NATO consider it void to allow for the stationing of permanent troops in the east of the alliance, for instance, on Tapa Base? Now, at, at first, we, we have to remove from deterrence to defense posturing, because um, this is so important uh, to show to, to Russia that, uh, that from 24th of February, the world is changed, and also posture of uh, NATO is changed, defensive way. And that means that we, we need substantially more troops in Estonian soil, and he, they have to be permanently here. Uh, it goes without saying, and the last question as we move, to, as we keep on the NATO issues, Minister Lane, as you're well aware, in uh, at the end of June, it's going to be the next uh, NATO summit in Madrid. How do you think, as you said, the world has irrevocably changed on the 24th of February, the posture of NATO has changed, how do you think these actions will impact the release of the 2030 strategic concept? I, I am quite sure that uh, leaders of NATO countries on the NATO summit will prove all these steps. We are prepared. What we are preparing right now for the summit, and and at first is to very important to change the posture from deterrence to defense, and secondly, to strengthen our eastern flank of NATO from south to the north. And collective defense, 360 degrees, it's, it's more important than ever it has been. Uh, so if you're just joining us this morning on, on uh, Global Terms, we're speaking with Estonian Minister Kali Lene, who's just outlined the short and long-term ramifications, how the world has changed irrevocably on the 24th, and how NATO's posture uh, sort of bolstering the eastern flank north to south and a 360-degree approach to defense is very necessary. Mr. Minister, we've covered the battlefield situation, we've covered the eastern flank, uh, we've covered NATO, let's go to the eastern flank. Since joining NATO in 2004, Estonia, as we've already established, has been on the front line of Russian aggression. From the 2007 cyber attacks to the abduction of Eston Kovar in 2014, the threat of Russia is ever present. So given the current hostilities, has Estonia witnessed an increase in Russian hybrid aggression or any other behavior that viewers in Central and Eastern Europe should know about? 
Yes, uh, we have uh, some signs that uh, that uh, Russia tries to to at attack our cyber infrastructure, but but we haven't yet received very strong attacks. But uh, we we never can't forget that uh, it's uh, one of the highest risks what uh, Russia can do, because uh, we are living on digital world. Minister, thank you for bringing it about sort of the uh, the increase on cyber infrastructure. It goes without saying, one of the most interesting takeaways from the current conflict right now between Ukraine and Russia is that cyber hasn't featured so prominently for a variety of reasons. We're three weeks into the war. Do you Does the Ministry of Defense in Estonia think that the, the more frustrated Russian military get that they'll be switching to more cyber attacks? Or do you think they'll remain using air power uh, to devastate Ukrainian for, forces and morale? Of course, I believe that Russia tries to use every way how to make destabilize the neighboring countries or directly to attack. And as we saw from last summer, how Russia Kreml used Belarus as a platform to attack also Lithuania and, and Poland through the hybrid attacks. It's a, one of the good examples how Russia acts and when a lot of people thought last summer that there is no connection between Kreml and Lukashenko, but nowadays everybody is agreeing that there was a direct contact or, or line between, between Putin and Lukashenko. And Putin used every possibility, every way, different way to, to make a mess on the world. Well, Minister, as you said before, as you came on to air, we don't want to keep you too long as you've got to take this cab. Again, just a quick summary, speaking to Estonian Minister of Defence, Kali Lanet, NATO needs to reinforce its defence on the eastern flank, north-south. It needs to really commit to a 360-degree approach to defence. And most importantly, as you've acknowledged, there is no limit to what President Putin will try to do to disrupt uh, and sow chaos throughout the West. Before we let you go, Minister Lenny, do you have any closing remarks or any other comments that you think viewers in Central and Eastern Europe should be on the lookout for as the war enters another deadly phase? Unity, solidarity, Slava Ukraini. Well, Minister, uh, I apologize for my language. Atia, thank you so much for joining us on Global Tremors. Uh, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, in, 2000, when, in 2014, when President Obama spoke to uh, Estonia, he said, you lost your democracy once, you'll never lose it again with NATO. So we're so glad, you know, from Central Europe, North America, that Estonia is part of this membership. All the best with all of your very important work moving forward. And we will be back at on Monday at 3 p.m. with Iona Maria Ciola, Research Fellow at Europe in the World to review the Black Sea region and refugees in Faroma. So one last time, Minister Lana Ayeta, thank you so much. And thank all you. the best for your work ahead. Goodbye. Good